And uh, I, uh, I preached this yesterday morning. Brother Lynn Boyd uh, had brought up uh, five young men from uh, Williams Lake and with our young people at Cornell. And we did have a great time. Uh, I actually think, I did not keep up with all the scores, I believe, but I think team number two uh, was the all-time winner. And uh, so it was very, very close. Uh, and the floor hockey, team one jumped out four to nothing. And uh, then it came back that uh, team two was ahead, and it went to a tie at uh, eight to eight. The next score win was the one, and it was uh, team two that won in floor hockey. Uh, I think it was uh, team one that won in eating the baby food. And uh, <laughs> I think Peter might have enjoyed that one a whole lot. But uh, anyway, we just had a, a great time. And Brother Lindboy preached on, uh, on uh, Friday night, and then we met at the administration office on, uh, on a Saturday morning. We uh, had played a couple more games, had, uh, had uh, breakfast together, and then we, we were able to preach to them. And, and uh, you know, this is one of the things that not only prepared for young people, but a message that prepared for each and every one of us. Uh, Solomon is giving counsel to his son Rehoboam. We're in chapter 4 of the book of Proverbs. You listen as I read aloud. I'm going to pick up in verse number 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Isn't that good? He says, Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. That's almost like the promise that God gave over in the Ten Commandments, or excuse me, over in the Old Testament uh, Commandments, as new in the New Testament Commandments, as it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. And so here, Solomon is saying, Rehoboam, and God has for every one of us, he is saying very simply, Hear my son and receive my sayings. Not just to hear it, but take it in. Take it to heart. Learn from it. Receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many. Uh, you know, I, I, I am blessed. I, I, I'm thankful to be able to be on this earth for 65 years. I would not have thought that as a young person and I've just truly been blessed. And uh, uh, I'm just thankful for the years that God has given to me. And if He gives me many, many more years, well, hallelujah. Verse 11 says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right path. Now notice what he is saying here. He says, first of all, I have taught you. Now in teaching is not just telling. Telling a young person to do something is not necessarily teaching them. It gives them knowledge. But more than just having the knowledge is being able to teach them, to be able to train them, to be able to work with them. Uh, a preacher friend of mine sent me a, 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 a YouTube, and, and uh, Elaine, you'd love it. I might, might have to show it to you sometime. Uh, but it was a police officer with a police dog. And that police dog was well trained. I mean, that tree, a police dog would move and do maneuvers and such with that officer without that officer even giving commands. And it, it was just amazing. But what it took, it took hours of teaching, hours of training. You know, you cannot tell a young person or a child, for that matter, or even an adult sometimes, one time and think that they are going to say, okay, I hear it one time and I'm going to continue doing that. I don't know how many times my mama told me not to pick my nose in public. <laughs> and you know what? I finally got a hold of it, but it took a while, amen? It took a while. I don't do it anymore. I have a handkerchief, I think, somewhere. And... Uh, uh, it, it, we, 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 it's more, notice what he says. He says very simply, he says, he says I, have, uh, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. And then he says, I have led thee in the right path. Not only is he teaching him, but he is leading them. He is going before him. He is setting a guide. That's your responsibility, Dad. That's your responsibility, Mom. That's your responsibility, Big Brother. That's your responsibility as an individual. We are to realize that we are to guide. We are to lead. And he says very simply, I have led thee in the right path. Thank the Lord for parents 
and for people that leads in the right path. There are so many people taking the wrong path. Thank God that there are those who are saying, I am going to lead. I am going to teach the Bible. I'm going to teach what God says. And I'm going to believe what God says. And I am going to lead in the right path. And by the very presence of you here at church on a Sunday night, show that you have the desire to lead in the right direction. He says, I have led thee in the right path. Notice verse 12. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Now what he's doing here, he's letting wisdom guide your feet. I'm sorry, guard your feet. He is letting wisdom guard your feet. And that's what he says here, as that he is teaching him the way of wisdom. He is leading him the way of the right path, the way of wisdom. And when thou goest, uh, thy step shall not be straightened. Now, the word straighten there means to hinder. It's where you come up to a very straight, very narrow place. And so you've got to understand that, that we are not to be hindered in our walk. He said very simply, uh, he says that uh, uh, when thou goest, thy step shall not be straightened. They're, they're not going to be hindered. And he says, when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. In other words, your life, of the way of wisdom, the right path, it's going to be a way that God has for you. You see, He makes the crooked straight. He makes the rough smooth. He is able to take, make the mountains and make them the plain. He is able to lead us in the right directions in which we should go to honor and to praise for Him. Now, uh, He keeps us from having to go a limping along or He keeps us from, uh, from having to stumble. He, he says down in the next verse, he says, take fast hold of instructions. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Now, he said, I, I've got some wisdom for you. And that which I am teaching you, the way of wisdom and the right path, he said, you need to take a hold of those instructions, that which I have for you in instructing you the things of God, and don't let her go, but to keep her, for she is thy life. When we take the instructions of God, our life is going to be a full life. Well, that's what he says back in verse number uh, 10. The years of thy life shall be many. And when we take the instructions of the Lord and take them to heart and to realize. Now, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instructions. And God gives us His Word for instructions. What is it? Basic information for life before you leave earth. What's what's the little saying with it? That's it's something I said it the other day and I can't remember it right now. Basic, it's basic instructions before leaving yeah. earth. Basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. You want to know how to live your life? You take the instructions right here from the Bible. This Bible, this Word of God that God has for both you and I, is how we are to take these instructions and it will keep us from limping along. It will keep us from stumbling along the way. And, and God has this so very much for us. He says, take fast hold of instruction and uh, let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. Now I want you to drop down to verse number 18 because we're talking about the right path. And he says in verse 18, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. There is a right path and that right path is a bright path. Isn't that good? I thought of that one today. <laughs> I was just saying the other day, the bright, the, the bright path, uh, the right path is the, the path that we are to take and, and to go that way. But it is a light that shines more and more unto, as he says here, uh, and that, uh, 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 that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. As I said this morning in preaching, when God gives you light and you take that light that God gives to you, that instruction that God gives to you and you apply it and you work with it, God gives you more light and God gives you more light. That's how we grow to be mature Christians. That's how we grow. That's why there's a lot of Christians, and I hate to say this, but there are a lot of Christians that are not growing. Why? Because God gives them light and they reject it. You know, they don't want to learn more about what God... They don't want to learn their responsibility. But as a believer, we need to know what our responsibilities are. 
We need to know what our obligations are. Uh, we need to know what is expected of us and what God expects and how we're going to know that unless we stay in the Word of God. And, uh, now, uh, He has this bright bright path. It's a bright path that shines in, uh, uh, more and more into that, uh, to that perfect day that He has for us that we're able to see. It is the path of the just. It is the path of the right. He says back in verse number uh, 11, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. Now notice the paths there are plural. We have to make choices every day. That There are a number of paths ahead of us. And we need to make the right choices every day. And I talked to the young people the, on Saturday about making those right paths. And those right decisions to make those right paths. Now, He gives wisdom to guard our feet. So He will keep us from limping and from stumbling, but also He gives us that so it would keep us from straying. Look at verse number 14, if you would please. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not the way of evil men. Now there is a right path, and there is a wrong path. The wrong path is the way of the wicked. That's what the Bible says. He says, enter not into the path of the wicked, go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. He says, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. They, uh, uh, for they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. Verse number 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness, and they know not at what they stumble. Now, isn't it interesting the contrast that the right path is the bright path, the way of life that shines more and more and more to the perfect day, but the way of the wicked, it leads to darkness. And in the way of the right path, we're not going to stumble and our steps are not going to be hindered, but in the dark path, you will stumble and you will be hindered. And there are the decisions that we have to make. Look down in verse number 26. And verse 27, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Now, that is what we need to set out to do. We're going to end up here just a little bit there. But the wicked path is right before it. It leads to deeper darkness. It gets darker and darker and darker. Now, the word wicked, referring to wicked men and evil men, is used some 100 times in the book of Proverbs alone. It deals with those who fools who have rejected God. And that's why we celebrate April 1st as the atheist holiday. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. So we come to understand that it's very foolish for them that they reject God and it leads to darkness. Now, this is what I did with the young people the other day. And this is what I want adults to realize as well. When we make a choice and we end up going into the wrong paths, it leads to darkness. It gets darker and darker and darker and darker. And young people as well as adults have purposely chosen to go that way. Why? Because it looks cool. Because everybody else is doing it. Look over, uh, the Bible says over the book of Numbers, I believe, I can't remember exactly where that, uh, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. But if everybody else is doing, and so many goes that way. Now what is that darkness that it leads to? Through many years of ministry and pastoring in Texas and in the Abbotsford area, the Vancouver area, up here working at the, uh, the Youth Detention Center, working with the uh, RCMP, with the uh, Restorative Justice, working with them. We see some of that darkness that is there. You as the average citizen don't understand the darkness that the police have to deal with and the darkness that is out there unless you make it a point to be out there with it. But there is a great darkness young people end up with poor social skills today because of that darkness. I just, I don't know, you probably saw it on the news the other day. They're very concerned about first, second, third, fourth, fifth graders because they do not have the strength in their hands to hold pencils in school. 
You know why they do not have the strength in their hands to hold pencils? Because they're playing games like this. And that was on the news. That was on global news. And they were talking about young people today are losing the strength that is there. Young people today, they're going into darkness more and more and they're losing and they have poor social skills. Young people don't know how to look an adult in the eye. Young people don't know how to talk to people. Young people, they, 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 they're going this way and that's not the way of wisdom. That's the way of darkness. We, people are to be sociable. People are to learn what it is to be sociable. People are to learn to take responsibility and to realize that we are living in the world with people. There is little self-worth in this darkness. People are doubting their self-worth more and more and more and more. People, uh, they, they're, they're hurt with just the basic needs. People that go and choose to go the way of darkness, they're in physical harm. There is, there is no safety in these places. That's why we have the Highway of Tears out here on 16 West and all across Highway 16 and all across the North. Young people have made wrong decisions. And the darkness has taken them and their physical safety is very much at, at alarm there. Their thoughts. The young people are hungry today. They're hungry. People wonder why they get mad and upset and angry. And it's called hangry. Is that what it's called? Hangry? They're just so hungry they're hang hangry. Like, you know? And why is this? Well, it's because of our social... No, it's because of sin in mankind. Well, we're looking to the government to take care of it. Government can't take care of it. Because it's the sin of this world. And we, we can invest all that we can. The darkness leads to the need for attention. Some young people just need somebody to pay a little bit of attention to them. Man, of course you know that I've driven bus from time to time and, and, and I see it and, 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 and the kids just love me as a bus driver. They just, they're all asking me, are you going to be our permanent? No, I'm not permanent bus driver. I'm not from just by at all. And, and, and they'll, they'll get, when, they, when you go to unload, you pull in front of an elementary school, and they're, I said, okay, look around, make sure you grab everything. Do not leave anything in your seat. If you leave your lunch, I will eat you the, eat the dessert and leave you the celery and carrot sticks. <laughs> all right, make sure you get your hat, your toots, your gloves, your cat, your dog. You know, I just tell them grab everything. Well, they're just laughing and cutting up, you know, and I speak to them when they get on the bus, you know, and, and so they, just, they just love it. You know what? They just need some attention. They just need somebody to look to them. We, they're hurting. People that end up in this darkness. Now, notice what it says. Please notice. The way of the wicked is as darkness, and they know not what they stumble. In that darkness, they're stumbling over these things that are there. And, and, and the insecurity. People today are so disconnected. So disconnected. I was, I was reading this week about five things that pastors go through that causes them to quit the ministry. And I looked at that and I said, well, thank God, I'm not all five of them. <laughs> But you know, one of the things was is the disconnection of pastors. A lot of pastors don't have real friends. They don't have a lot of men friends. And, and the reason is is because of pastoral position sometimes as to uh, opening themselves up. And so, and so we look at a number of things that are there. But when we come to understand that we need to have that connection, we need to have that outreach to be able to be there. They go into that darkness and they don't know what they stumble, the attachments that they have. You know, some young ladies, they have attached themselves to men that are very abusive. They have attached themselves and married men and they knew the men were not saved when they got married and they just went against God because they were in love. And because they were in love, they got married and not listening to God and it said not to be unequally yoked together. Now they have that attachment. They have that situation. And it's an abusive one. Talked about physical safety. Insecurity, attachment, addiction. You don't know what you're going to stumble over. Young people are being addicted and adults are being addicted. You know not what you stumble over. Fear. Oh, let me tell you something. People are afraid. 
with the shootings that takes place in the states and in many other places, the things that are going around, kids, kids and children, and, and, and so they're afraid. The emotions that people go through. The pain of emotion. There is that darkness. The way of the, uh, of the wicked is as darkness and they know not what they stumble. And let me tell you something. We need to guard our feet. We need to realize that we have to make a choice on which path that we are going to go down. Which path are we going to go? He says to Rehoboam, he says, Son, you need to guard your feet as to where you're going. There is that right path and there is a wrong path. Which path are you going to take? And then he says, guard your heart. Notice if you would in verse number 20. My son, my son, attend unto my words and incline thy ear to my saying. In other words, let me have your attention. Let me have your attention. I just love attention. You know? No, I've got something for you to hear. Incline thy ear unto my saying. Notice what he says. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Where are we supposed to keep it? In the midst of our heart. We need to understand that we are to guard our heart. Verse number 20, uh, three, 22. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all flesh. Keep thine heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. We need to have wisdom and God gives us wisdom and we need to ask God for wisdom and correction and instruction so that we can guard our heart. Now he deals two areas here. First of all, we know that you and I as born again believers, the Bible teaches us, Paul says, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That as a believer, you are a spirit because you're spiritually alive. You've been born again. Before you were born again, you were spiritually dead. But now that you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you've been born again. You are spiritually alive. That's your God consciousness. Your soul, mind, will, and emotion. That's your self-consciousness. And your body. Your five senses. Touch, taste, smell, and feeling and all that. And so you have those senses that are right there. Now notice what he says. Guard your heart. Talking about keeping them in your heart. For they are life unto those, uh, them that find it, and help to uh, their flesh. Now what do you think the flesh would be referenced to? Us. Our bodies. That's our flesh that he's talking about. We're not talking about the flesh in Romans where it talks about our carnal nature. He is talking about our body. We need wisdom uh, to guard our heart so that we can have our bodies taken care of. We need wisdom. You know, we need wisdom in what we eat. Uh-oh. And how much we eat. Ooh, which is China Cup today. Ooh, man. Wow. You know, some folks say China Cup. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what we eat. How much sleep we get. What we put in our bodies. Alcohol, drugs, tobacco. Do we seriously understand? Wisdom of our hearts will help us. He says very simply, keep them in all thine heart, in this to thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and help to their flesh. We will have the wisdom of our body, but not only our body, but our soul. Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now the soul, we, we call it the heart of the, the, uh, the seat of the heart. Our mind, our will, and emotion. Our heart is not just emotions. But our heart deals with understanding. I shared this this morning, but go with me back a couple of pages to Proverbs chapter 2. My son, verse 1, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thy incline thy ear unto, what's that word? Wisdom. And apply thine heart to understanding. Notice what he says. Apply thy heart to understanding. We need to have an understanding of what's going on. Some people, they get their lives in such a mess and say, I just don't understand. You know why you don't understand? Because you've not stopped to listen to God or to talk to God about it. I don't understand what the kids are doing like they're doing. Well, number one, they've got to know sin nature. Number two, are you training and discipling them properly? 
And by the way, kids have that old sin nature. That's the first aspect. They're like their fathers. Amen. Yeah, amen. There you go. There you go. They're, they're like their grandfather, their great grandfather. Wow. That's the first understanding. Secondly, we understand that we are to train up a child. We are to spend time with that child and invest in that child and so that there will be understanding. And he says here, guard your heart. He says, keep thine heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. You know why the world is such a mess that we're in? It's because the hearts of many people have gone down that wicked path and they're in darkness. And they are not realizing what they're stumbling over. They have no idea Satan has become an angel of light and has blinded them. And they miss the true gospel. The Bible says that Satan hides the gospel. Now, guard, guard your heart. Now, here's a good one. Notice, if you would, verse number 24. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Wisdom will help guard your tongue. And your tongue and my tongue, the book of James says, it's like a fire. You know why? The, the, the old country preacher said, you know why we've got saliva in our mouth? If we didn't have saliva in our mouth to keep our tongues wet, because the Bible says it's like a fire, he says we'd be burning out our mouth all the time. Now, I don't know if that's good biology or not, but one thing for sure the Bible makes it very plain that our tongue needs to be tamed. We need to tame our tongue. And he says very simply, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lip put far from thee. We have wisdom to help us to guard our tongue. You want to pray for your kids? Your kids are arguing and fighting and bickering this. Way. Pray that God would give them wisdom to guard their tongue. And young people, you did good to learn how to guard your tongue. Your tongue will get you in so much trouble. It will. It got me in a lot of trouble. You know? Our mouths, our lips, we have to be so careful. I, I, this helped wake some folks up. Uh, go with me to the book of Ephesians. That's over in the New Testament. Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse number 29, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. I'll give you a second to get there. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. How is God or Paul saying to the church there that we are to use our mouth and our lips and our tongue? We're to use it not for corrupt communication, but for the good of use of edifying. We're to build up one another with our mouth, with our tongue, with our lips. We are to say the things that will build people up. Tearing people down does not help whatsoever. You are going down the wrong path if you think it's cute to just tear people down with your words. Amen. Verse number 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now I want you to know that the bitterness that is in your heart, the wrath that is in your heart, the anger that is in your heart, the evil, uh, the, the clamor is in your heart, the evil speaking is going to come out of your mouth. If it's there, and you harbor it there, it's going to come out. You cannot keep it in. And that's why he says in verse number 32, be ye kind one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Our words are so important. We have to be very... And you know what? I have to confess, it's cute, and it's funny sometimes to say something that tears people down or it hurt people. I mean, it just, it just comes so natural to me. I have to bite my tongue. You would not believe the bite marks that are on my tongue. I mean, something happened. It's so cute if I was to just say this, you know. I, I've lived long enough to hear all, hear all these cute sayings and, and everything like that. You know, I, I, <laughs> and so I just have to laugh about it and ask God to forgive me about it because I shouldn't even be thinking like things like that. 
But it happens to any and all of us. Amen? Notice he says, Be put away from you with all malice. Put these things away from you and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Corrupt speech, we are to stay away from. It, and wisdom will help us. Let's go back to Proverbs 20, uh, 4, verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on, and thy eyelids look straight before thee. We need to guard our eyes. We need to guard our eyes. I did not take the time to look it up, but I believe that it's in Ecclesiastes. I'm not positive, but I believe it's there. My eyes have affected my heart. You know what we see has an effect upon our heart. And if we look at the bad in people, and we look at the errors in people, and we look at the, 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 the wrinkles and the moles and the pimples, and we look at the strangeness of people, you know what? It affects our hearts towards them and towards God. It affects our hearts towards ourselves. Notice, we need to pray for wisdom, and God gives us wisdom to guard our eyes. And he says very simply, let thy eyes look straight on and thy eyelids straight before thee. It's so important that we understand this. What we look at. I will walk with my, at my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. What is it that we're looking at? What is it that we're watching? What is it that we're spending time with? We have to be very, very careful with our eyes. Because what we see with our eyes is it's etched into our minds for eternity. It is etched into our minds. Every one of us, even from the youngest to the oldest, if we decided to go down a bad path in our mind today, we can go back to some pretty bad stuff. And we can just see it just as it happened if we bring our minds to that. Thank God that God forgives us of all of our sins and God takes that all away from us. And it's only if we purpose to go that way. And I have no choice to go that way. I have no desire to go that way whatsoever. I don't want to go back down the old paths. I thank God for the new paths that God's given to me that we can go down. He said, give us wisdom for our eyes. And then, notice back in verse number 26. Ponder the path of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. Turn not from the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Now we come to the ponder. There is a right path and there is a wrong path. There is a path that leads to light and to a bright and glorious day. There is a path that leads to darkness and it gets darker and darker and a deep darkness. And there, and notice what he says, ponder the path every day and beyond every day throughout the day, we say, you have to make choices. There are always choices coming up to you. Some are, and I'm not saying all the choices are, are bad, bad and good. Some of them are just not very well for you. I mean, it's not wicked, but it's not for your best interest. And we have to ponder what it is that we're going to put our energy and which way we're going to go. Now, notice what he says in verse 26. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Now go back to verse 10. Hear, my son, receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right path. So here we ponder the feet, uh, the path of our feet, and all of our ways will be established. The word established means to be set upon, to be set up. Like you come and you establish a home. Many folks have moved to Prince George and have established a home here. Many folks have born and raised here and your home was established here. Now, your, the establishment is your life and where you're at. And, and, and we come and he says, you ponder that and if you choose the path that, the, the, that he said that I will teach you and I will lead you in the right path, we establish our lives in the right path. And that's what happens. We establish our path, our lives in the right, and so our lives is living for God and learning of God and we're following instruction and we're living for Him the best we can. But I want you to know you still have decisions you have to make. You know? Now, 
be honest with you, the path that I have chosen and my life is established, I don't get angry a lot. Now my wife might tell you differently, but I'm preaching. I don't get angry a lot, but I do get angry. And I, boy, I get angry. I mean, boy, the blood vessels, you know, the face. I mean, I get angry, you know. But my life has been established over here where I don't get angry. But sometimes, because of a situation, I'll make a wrong choice and I'll get angry. And it can be with anything that you can think of. Here is a man, a godly man, who loves God and is following God and he's bringing his children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, but all of a sudden there's a choice that he makes and he makes a wrong choice on the computer and goes and look at pornography. Now, he's not established at that. His life is established over here, but he made a wrong choice. What happens? The Holy Spirit of God hits him and God brings conviction upon him and he said, oh God, I shouldn't look at that. And he said, God, forgive me. My life is established over here. It happens. It could be with anger. It could be with swearing. It could be with any number of things. Any number of greed, jealousy, envy, bitterness. It can, you're living over here in the right path, but you have to make decisions all the time. And one wrong decision... Let me tell you something. That's not your establishment. That's not the way that you are. I was in a pastor's office one day and news came and boy, he got so upset, he swore. And that wasn't, and he looked at me and he said, I'm so sorry. He said, I, I, I just, uh, and, I, and I said, brother, I know where you live. I know that this right path is where, and it just something got over you. So, so it was such a strong emotion that caused him to swear. It's like the old cowboy preacher that was preaching and, and boy, he got so mad at the devil, he started swearing at the devil and he stopped in front of the church and said, oh my. And he grabbed his cowboy hat and took off. And, and, and one of the deacons said to everybody, he said, you know what? I've been wanting to tell the devil that in a long time. <laughs> you know, the, it, it's not where we live. And by the way, if we've chosen the bad path, the wicked path, and that's what you are establishing, you might make some choices over here and do something good from time to time, but your life is established over here. You hear me, young people? If you make choices and take that wrong path and it's getting darker and darker, oh, you come to church and you're over here on the right path coming to church. If you go home and you go out on your own and you use those little swear words, you use those little anger, those little jealousies, those little pity parties, and this and the other. You're establishing your life over here in the wrong path. Oh, we've got to go to church. So I'm going to get over here on the right path. Uh, adults, have you established your life over here on the wrong path? Well, my wife wants me to go to church. I'm going to go to church. Hi, everybody. I'm in church today. You know, and Oh, but over here, your established life is over here. There's no prayer. There's no Bible reading. There's no uh, fellowshipping with God's people. This is your establishment over here. And every once in a while, you make good choices to go over here. See, those, those, those choices work both ways. Do you understand? Whatever you are establishing, but I've got good news. Here's the good news. Everybody I know that have established their lives over here in the wrong paths, God's glorious gospel comes to them. And they can turn from their sins and put their faith in Jesus Christ. They can trust Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ takes them out of the old Mari play and He puts them upon a rock. He puts a new song in their mouth even praises to our God. Jesus can make a difference. And young people and adults, if you're living a life of a hypocrite and you're living and you're establishing your life over here, let me tell you, the best thing you can do is get out and ask the Holy Ghost of God that He would work in your heart to help you to repent of that and to turn from that darkness. As the Bible says very simply, enter not into the path of the wicked, go not in the way of the evil man, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, pass away, get away from it! And ask old God by His grace and His mercy to go this way. I mentioned to our young people the other night. I knew and have known some young people that were at camp, that were at vacation Bible school, that was very active in Sunday school and in church. I've known of one young man in particular that died in a gang-related war in, in, in the Abbotsford area. Not very far from where our church was. He died involved with drugs and gangs. I know of young people that have spent time in prison. 
I know of young people that have had their lives completely wrecked. They've established their lives over there. Oh, they went to church and they knew what it was over here, but they made a lot of wrong decisions and they established their life. But I thank God that His grace is sufficient. That He reached out to them and is always there. And they, like a prodigal, many of them, not all, but many of them, like a prodigal, realize that they've established their lives wrong and they came back to Jesus. And now they're establishing their life in the right way. Ponder the path in which you're going to take. I told our young people, you might say, Lord, today, this Saturday morning, I'm going to follow you. And then Saturday night, be on the wrong path. This evening, I could challenge you adults. You say, man, I'm going to be on that right path. Monday morning, you can be on the wrong path. You can't. Just that, just that simple. You have to make a choice. You have to say, Lord, give me that wisdom. The wisdom to guard my heart, the wisdom to guard my step, the wisdom to guard my tongue, the wisdom to guard my eyes. The Lord help me to establish the right way. Because it's brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Amen! Hallelujah! What choices are you going to make? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love You. And we do pray, Father, that we would make the right choices. I pray this for our young people, our children, our teenagers, our adults, our husbands, our wives, our seniors. Lord, I pray, Father, that we would understand that we're to establish our way in that right path. That You give us instruction. You give us Your Word. You give us the power of the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, to work in our lives, to lead us and guide us and direct us. That we can get a hold of these truths and, and make those right decisions. Father, I pray that with earnestness of heart that, that, that we would measure and look as to what it is to, to not go the way of darkness. But Lord, if we find ourselves on that dark path, that we would turn from that path. That we would avoid it. That we would pass out of that path and get back over by the grace of God into the right path that leads more into a perfect day. Lord, I pray that Your grace we know that is sufficient. Father, we believe, but help our unbelief. We would cry out to Thee and truly, truly be led of Thee in the right way. Father, because there are unsaved family members, unsaved friends, unsaved co-workers, unsaved world out here that needs a Christian that will walk the right path. Help us, dear Lord, to establish our lives in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in Christ's name I pray. The people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, let me ask you just to think with me just a few moments as to what kind of a decision that you would like to make. You would ponder the path. Not just right now. This right now is good. You have to make some decisions right now. Make those decisions because right now God's dealing with your heart, but it's also in the morning tomorrow afternoon and Wednesday and Saturday. The days come when we have to make the right decision.